Rocker with YouTube. You already know Big Rocker with a comedy perspective. You already know what time it is directly from the county jail. Signing off, dude, with a little bit of positive energy. So, before we get to this video, please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support your boy, and hit that bell notification for future buyer content. Now, before we get to the title of this video, man, uh, man, I be hearing a lot of crazy stuff, man. The, the craziest thing I heard recently is someone, someone discussing how, you know, being locked up that they, they can't work out because they don't know what time they're going to shower. And me being someone who's done a lot of time, right, I fucking laughed when I heard that because no matter where I've been, California, Arizona, whatever county jail, prison, where, wherever it's at, I've always maintained a disciplined uh, program. I've always worked out, and I've never made not knowing when I was going to shower be the excuse. Every day, no matter what, I, there's a thing called bird bathing, and if you've been to prison I'm, or county jail, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know about that, so I thought that was kind of funny that someone kind of used that as an excuse of why they don't work out. But anyways, let's get to this video. But I just had to bring it up real quick. Um, North Daniels in Arizona. Okay. As previously, we discussed about Southside and Sureños being in Arizona. And I gave you guys a little bit of, of an understanding about the California car. Okay, the California car in the Arizona Department of Correction is basically the Southsiders, Sureños. They run their own program. They have their own car. Okay, they have their own rules. They have their own roll call. Okay, uh, if a Southsider ends up going to, the, to a, a, you know, a prison, a pinta yard, a block, it's not going to be the easy Chicanos that are really going to be checking his paperwork. It's going to be the California car, another South Sider from California. Okay, so... They're established in the Department of Corrections in Arizona. Okay, as, as we already know, and I've told this many times before, the AZ Chicanos basically... It's their yards in Arizona. Everybody else is basically just a, a visitor, and they're allowed to be there because they let them be there, and those are facts. Now, when I discussed a little bit about the AZ sauces, I gave you guys a little bit different reasons of how they migrated. Some people came out here, you know, Phoenix, Tucson. Some of them even established certain hoods that are, you know, basically with roots and ridges in California, believe it or not. But... The dress A and AZ, it represents basically loyalty in the hoods out here to the AZ, uh, AZ enemy, okay? Not to the California enemy. The dress A here does not represent suit. Anybody that has a, 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 a Risa or, or, or not a dress A, right, is basically loyal to the big homies from AZ, not from California. They are not under the uh, Southern United Alaska bandera here, okay? Now, when it comes to Northerners, Okay, you're lucky to have more than one on, on any yard in the Department of Corrections in Arizona. And see, there's a lot of reasons why, and I'm going to give you guys a little bit more uh, explanation why. Okay, most people who can't came here from, you know, Southern California that moves to AZ, you know, it, it borders the state. They're not that far away. A lot of them have family members out this way. So a lot of them move this way. Either they're running from the law, maybe they're running from different hoods. No, you never know what they came to, to AZ for, okay? But they have a lot of different reasons, okay? Now, northerners, people from up north, the Bay Area, okay, the Valley, it's kind of like people in AZ that are from up north, it's kind of like how back in the day, a lot of people from San Jose moved to Modesto. There was cheaper, there was cheaper housing out there. There was uh, jobs. It was like a new kind of economy. And so it was a, a place where you could live a little bit more luxurious, as opposed to the Bay Area. Now, it's the same thing in, in AZ. So most of the people who are in AZ that are from up north didn't come out here to try to establish hoods. There's no hoods that I know of that are from California that are North Daniel uh, have roots from Northern California. Now, there is some that are from Southern California, and there's actually some uh, one hood in Tucson that has some roots with the Bulldogs. But as far as uh, Northerners or North Daniel Barrios, there's none that I know of, okay? Now, so most people that are coming this way, they're basically coming to have a different type of life. They either moved here with their families, right, when they were young, right, or they came here when they're older to try to be, be given a different opportunity, 
okay? I've met a lot of homeboys from Soho, from Stockton, from Salinas, from Parlier, that pretty much are older. They're doing their own thing. Uh, they're not out there in the, in, in the criminal element or activities, and they're just here to change their life. Therefore, you're not going to run across a whole bunch of northerners as opposed to when you go to a yard in Arizona, a prison yard, you may run into 50, 60 uh, Southsiders from uh, Southern California. You're lucky to see more than one northerner on a prison yard in AZ. Like I said, different reasons why they moved to AZ. That's just my personal opinion. Now, when you're a northerner and you come into the system in AZ, okay, pretty much you're going to be outnumbered off top by, by all these different groups that are there. You're going to have, basically, you have Woods, you're going to have their car, you're going to have Crips, you're going to have Bloods, you're going to have Kim folks, which is the Blacks, you're going to have Bicas or BBs, you're going to have AZ Chicanos, and then you're going to have the Cali car, which is based on the South Side. So basically, the AZ Chicanos are what you call Skina to any Northerner when they hit the system. Now, there's been some conflict in the past, like I said, based upon some issues that happened in the Fed, which I'm not going to go, but apparently, from my understanding, a lot of that the Northerners are about to walk these yards, and they have the support in Skina of the AZ Chicanos. As long as the Northerner basically falls in line with what's expected of them, which, like I said, a lot of the expectations are nothing too drastic. It's basically the same type of cause that the Northerners have back at home, right? About they want to have, they want to be treated with respect. They want to have a, a equality. They want to have the same social status as any other group. Any northerner with that type of respect and dignity when they hit the yard. Therefore, they basically run with AZ Chicanos. Okay, they basically run with that car. You know, expected. You know what I'm saying? I can't go into details as far as, you know, are, are they going to have certain, like, laws they have to follow? No, no, they're just going to be riding with their car. They're going to get the support. And they're just going to do what's expected of them. And if something jumps off, they're going to be expected to back their play. Now, the thing about AZ that's different than California. Well, California has been changing, okay? But what I hear is when it comes to race issues, all those that are about the group will jump for each other. It doesn't matter if it's Bisa, it doesn't matter if it's a Cali car, AZ Chicanos, even the Northerners. They're all going to back each other when it comes down to race. So it isn't like California where you have separation, the Northerners, Southerners, and Bisa, and, you know, say the Southerners get into with the Blacks. It's not always 100% sure if the Northerners are going to back their play or not. In AZ, they're all going to back each other. But, see, there was a time when certain owners were going to yards, and a lot of individuals from the county car they didn't want them at first. They didn't want them out there. You know, I mean, traditional enemies in California. So Southside wanted to jump on the Northerners when they hit these yards. Now, what stopped that from happening was basically the AZ Chicanos. They gave them the speed the, the support and whatnot. So when people see someone, like I said before, with a blessed day and they're from AZ, that's not in reference to that they're a Sereno or anything like that. That's just them uh, paying respect to their big homies, but their bandera that they fall under. It has nothing to do with the California anime faction. It's the AZ faction, which has a whole different type of segment, chain of command, procedures and whatnot, and they have their own system too, like their Sereno and, and their, you know, their Chicano-based foundation. Okay, which I'm not going to go into too much details about. But for the Northerners, when they hit the system, they're allowed to be on these yards based upon the AZ Chicanos. Now, as far as when it comes to the streets, you're going to run some Northerners out here. You know, it's, the last 20 years, like I said, there's been a lot of people moving from California to AZ. So it's not uncommon to, you know, be in, in a city like Tucson or Phoenix and come across a couple of Northerners, you know, that are from, like, San Jose, Modesto, you know, anywhere, Parlier, Woodlake. I've met homeboys from basically everywhere since I've been in Tucson, okay? And so it's not going to be uncommon, but they're all there for different reasons. Some of them, most of them, like I said, came out here to have a better life. And they have a few businesses, you know, they're, they have good jobs, and they, they basically bring those work trade skills that they acquired in California out to AZ and they put them to use. Now, there is one situation that's kind of interesting, right, that, that has brought Northerners to AZ, which is when a lot of people were doing time about 10 years ago, they were doing the 
interstate transfers where they had prisons in Arizona that were private prisons, but they were not part of the AZ Department of Corrections. They were basically private prisons, and they had contracts with California to where people would do time. Like, I think uh, Eli was one of them, I think, for a minute, or one of those prisons. I forgot which ones. Uh, you know, which one was it? So it's just my time. Which person is that in AZ that they were getting, sending California inmates to? Silly? It was Eloy. Yeah, Eloy. It's not, like it's not like that no more, though, right? Yeah. Okay. But for a minute, they had everybody separated. They were not. They were not doing time with. Uh, if you were coming with a CDCR number, you were uh, doing time basically at a prison just with other California inmates. Okay. They don't have that program no more. But a lot of families moved out this way to be closer to their loved. Or they brought their teenage sons. Basically, then they brought their brothers, their cousins, and whatnot. So there's certain areas in AZ where now you've got a small little, you know, a small little uh, nucleus of mourners in different cities now. You know, I've been, I've been told this to a lot of different people. Now, you also have Yuma, which, if you're very familiar with Yuma, Yuma is the home of Sister Chavez. Now, what does Sister Chavez do for years? He was basically, you know, he was a, a vocalist, right? An advocate for labor workers' rights, working in the fields, migrant workers and whatnot. And there was a lot of people who migrated from Yuma to Salinas and that whole Monterey Peninsula to do work, okay? So there's a lot of people who have not only family relationships, but friendships between the county. That I've been told that there is a between Yuma and Salinas. And to further validate and verify that, there was an indictment that happened in uh, October of, I think September, October of 2021, um, right after Operation Quiet Storm. It was called, I want to say Operation Blackhawk, and it was about basically some illicit activities that were going on between Yuma and basically Monterey County, Salinas. So, like I said, I've met people from Yuma, and they both, they all bump music like uh, Casper Lopes, they bump uh, Rico Tusco, they bump bands, and it's a trip how much influence now that individuals from Northern California sometimes have. Like I said, there's, you know, you have Northerners in places like New Mexico, you have established hoods out there, Washington, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, AZ to this, to this current time, I do not know of one hood that is AZ based, right? And if there is, there may be some that I don't know about, and they probably have some type of influence from California. But that's pretty much how it is for North Daniels and AZ. You know, they're currently, they're allowed to walk the yards. You know, they, it's a lot harder for them to try to establish a household program in accordance to, to North Daniel functions. You know, it's not going to be like in California to where when you get to a household, you have to establish a chain of command and set procedures and whatnot because it's rare that you're on a yard with more than one northerner if there's going to be any at all. So basically, the ones that do come and hit the system, they're basically visitors. You know, they're just passing through doing their time. You know, and what's interesting, like I said before, is a lot of people from, uh, you know, that run AZ Chicano, with their crimp, blood, uh, you know, traditional barrio cholo style uh, hoods and whatnot, they all get kind of like the same type of uh, attitude like that the northerners have. Like, like I was telling my seller, he was like, "Wow, you're right about this." And I go, "Man, I go look, everybody here, that's an easy Chicano. Look at them; they all look different. You know, some have bald heads, more traditional cholo looks. Some have braids in their hair. Some have long hair. Some have fades." And that's kind of the same way in like AZ because they have different areas. Like Phoenix, a lot of the hoods over there are more traditionally like kind of like body based. You know what I'm saying? More tr- and a little bit of both. But you also have Crips and Bloods. And you have Crips and Bloods also in Phoenix. Right? So like I said, it's, it's you know, it's all these different groups together. You know what I'm saying? But where, where I was going wrong with this, right, before I got off track was they have the same kind of attitude that the nerds do when someone enters into their household. As everybody knows from previous episodes, bond number two is basically you will have a strong attitude towards age, all those of Latin descent. And basically that's the same thing that the AZ Chicanos afford any northern of the Hanson You know, uh, 
So therefore, like I said, they're able to coexist on these yards. You know, the South Siders, like I said, they have the numbers to where they have their own car. And they don't call them, the thing that's kind of interesting, they don't really call them South Siders. They call them the county car. You know, and in reference to someone that's, that's, that's a northerner, it's just that they're looked at as just someone that's rocking AZ Chicano. Anyways, I hope all this makes a little bit more sense to you guys, Matt. So I've done a little bit of research as well as what I've experienced. You know, what I see going day to day. Like, like there's different people in here currently. There's, you know, there's South Carolina in here from fucking Watts, Montana, you know, uh, Santa Barbara, just in the thought I'm, I'm at currently, you know. And then you got Chris Bloods, and then you got people that are from more uh, traditional trouble based type of roots, you know? And it's just, it's interesting how everybody's able to coexist and, and show respect amongst each other. I, you know, the way we live our lives today, I guess a lot of people are kind of waking up that, you know, it's no longer about looking just anything on each other. It's more about trying to show unity and respect and pushing towards common goals because. At the end of the day, who's the number one enemy when we're doing time? It's always going to be the system. It's always going to be those that are trying to lock us down and just, you know, trying to oppress us and trying to put us in, in situations to where we're mistreated, you know? And um, it's, you know, people nowadays see things for what they are, you know? And, and I'm not a promoter. I don't advocate any type of gangs or violence or anything. You know, I'm all about people trying to support each other to be better men. And that's my whole goal. And with that said, she's from a conflict perspective, and this is how it is for North Angeles in Arizona.